All right, welcome to this video on the Trek Wrestling pre-registration system. Uh, we're going to get started right away. Most of you probably already requested your tournament to have a pre-registration, but if you haven't, you can click on Contact Us and submit a ticket and let us know. And then when you do that, make sure you let us know if you want online payments, on-site, or a combination of both. So if you did that, if you already requested that during the order process, you would have received an email with a link to get right in. But I can also get there from a couple of different ways, actually. I can click on pre-registration. I can enter the name of the tournament here on this pre-reg list. Or from our home page, and this is the method I'm going to use, I'm just going to type the name of the tournament, a few characters of it anyway, and then it brings me here. So if I clicked here, I would log into my tournament, of course. But I want to log into my pre-reg. And you'll note that the pre-reg is added. Or you'll, you'll be aware if it is or not if this link is here. If it's not here, then you need to let us know. Um, if if it's if this link isn't here and then we can add it for you but I'm just gonna click on it this brings me to this um, landing page of the pre-reg system this is where people will come in and click to register I'll refer back to this a couple times during this video but for now I'm gonna click admin login I'm gonna use my username and password and I'm in the tournament the username and password is going to be the same as the one that got you into your tournament so the other way you can get here is if I am in my tournament site and I go to registration and pre-reg limits. If I click pre-reg, there'll be a blue link right here that I can use to log in as well. And it's all going to bring me back to my pre-registration. First item I'm going to note is the importing. I can um, import basic info, data fields, and teams with this link, or divisions and weights, pre-reg limits, and deadlines with this one. And this will just import from a previous pre-registration. If you run the same tournament every year, this is probably really handy. I just click the link, I can select the tournament I want to import from, and then whatever items I want, and I hit this import. And it's a quick way to get your pre-reg set up effectively and, and uh, very efficiently. This setup guide, it's kind of a checklist, a to-do list that shows you all of the items, uh, pretty much everything that I'm going through in the video, so I'm not going to spend much time on it now make sure you know that that's there and then basic info we're going to start really with our setup here one thing of note is that uh, this pre-registration is already opened um, your pre-reg at this point probably isn't and there'll be another link in here that says click here to activate and all that means is when you activate you open it up for people to come and register pre-registration name you can go ahead and change here contact information you want to put this here email and or phone number and this is actually and I'm going to come back here to this landing page to set it references. This is where that's going to show up. So that's where this item is. So you want to make sure you put something there. Uh, you will also note that our ticket system uh, link is there as well. So if people have questions for us, they can do so. Um, if you are having people pay with checks or cash, you can put some instructions here. Uh, the matrix, I can select to show a matrix or not to, pu to the public. And a matrix is just a list, uh, not a list, a number. Um, it's, a, it's a matrix of numbers in my pre-registration. So if you see now that this matrix is not available, if I flip this to yes, and then I save down here, and I come back and reload this page, you'll see that this matrix link is here. And now if I click it, it'll show all of my groups and weights and then the numbers in there. And again, I only have one wrestler in here, so yours will um, update as people register. So that's up to you whether you want to show that or not. Um, I am going to skip ahead kind of quickly. The other item um, on this page, and we get a lot of questions about this, maybe I want to show a wrestler list of people who are registered. I can do that also, and there's two places I want to make sure. Um, I And I'll come back to the rest of this basic info. But if I go to deadlines, this release to public date, if I set this back to a date before um, today's date I guess and I save that um, and then I want to make sure that if I'm not seeing it yet if I go into my tournament and go to settings I want to make sure that I have this show wrestler counts which is down here set to yes if that's set to yes and then when I go back to this page and reload it you'll see that now I have a link also to the wrestler list and if I click on this it'll show um, the wrestler list as well. So again, up to you whether you want to show that information or not. But uh, that's how you would that's how you would do that. 
I'm going to come back to basic info just because I skipped ahead. It was kind of a nice spot to show you both of those items, though. A static list, um, typically you would have people come in, and if their team's not in, a, in the drop-down menu, they could add a new team. Uh, and that's, that's kind of the default. But if you wanted to have a list, a set list, a static list, you could flip this to yes and then go to teams up here and then you could enter the teams. Maybe it's sanctioned teams in your state or maybe you're only inviting certain teams. You can go ahead and um, add that list. The track wrestling header, that's this up here. I can choose to show that or not. Typically, you'd want to show it just so people know which tournament they're registering for. But I could also add my own header here if I wanted to. And I have um, something copied. And this is just some kind of basic HTML. But if I copy it in here, um, it's this code right here. It's basically just an image tag. But if you um, if you need some help with this, let us know. It's going to grab an online image, and I've already done that. But if I click Save, and then now if I go back to reload this page, you'll see that that online image that I've um, added as my header is there. So this is just our logo, of course. You might have a, a banner or something that you want to put up there. So feel free to adjust that or let us know if you have questions. Footer for the invoice, you can have there. So you could add some HTML um, to have something on your invoice as well. Consider an athlete as registered. You have three choices here. Um, if they're paid, if they're submitted, or maybe I'd show everyone no matter what. And that's actually going to relate back to um, in most cases, it's going to come into play in your matrix or your wrestler list. So you can decide how you want to consider an athlete registered. If I'm having a pre-reg where I'm collecting um, payments online, I want to make sure I fill out this information of where the check goes and who it's made out to. Um, these items are related to cards. If I'm requiring a card, I could select which card, maybe put a link to where they could purchase it. Um, also, if I want to require it, and if I want to require it to be valid. So go through all these things, hit your save, and then your basic setup. Your basic info is kind of um, taken care of. I'm going to skip data fields for just a moment. I'll come back to that. Pre-reg limits. I go through to my tournaments here. I can select. Maybe I want to set that to 500. I save it, and then that'll cap it. If I have a tournament that I have a pre-registration linking multiple tournaments, uh, maybe I have a Greco and a Freestyle. You'd see them both. You want to make sure that you edit both of those events there. Deadlines we touched on, but if I go to deadlines here, um, I can change this for my release information to public, or also this is going to be the close date, this lockout statisticians. You might see lockout statisticians. You might also see um, pre-registration close date here. Um, either way, click on the calendar. Make your adjustments. You can change the times here and the AM, PM, and save that. And that will close your pre-registration at whatever time and date that you want. It'll do that automatically. Keep in mind that these are central standard time um, times and times and dates here. So just be aware of that. Divisions and weights. Um, these will come through from your tournament, too. So if you have these in your tournament, if you've already imported those, you'll see them here. If I need to add a group on this page, I can just click Add Group, type the group name, Put the pre-reg fee, the on-site fee, and then the match length, and I would add it. Um, if within here I needed to add more weight classes or adjust weight classes, I could also do that using this or this. So I could delete by checkmarking them. Other items on this groups page, the date of birth range is pretty important. When somebody comes through to register, they're going to enter their date of birth, and our system is going to place them in the right age group. If you want to change the date of birth ranges, you just click on it and make your adjustments there. A couple of points here. Make sure that the lower number uh, year is first and the higher one is second, just to make that going left to right. And also, you can overlap these if you need to. Um, you know, Maybe there are some kids that would fit in more than one group. That's just fine. You can adjust those as you see fit. Teams page. This is where the teams will show. So anybody who's already uh, registered, um, those teams will show up here. You could also add those teams if you're using that static list. If you have multiple teams, um, like variations of a name, I could go ahead and select these and combine those teams if I needed to do that. Coupons. If I wanted to add a coupon for, say, maybe uh, some sort of discount, um, I could go ahead and click here, add coupon. I would put the name, what the discount amount was. Maybe this would be $5. 
number of times it can be used, and then um, that that's probably not relating to most of you. But you can go ahead and add those coupons. Not real common, but some people use that. The extras. This is where maybe you might be selling tickets, you might be selling coaches, bands, those sorts of things. I can just click the add extra. I would put the type of turn, type of extra it is, the item name, and put the price, and I could add that. And then in, if I go back here, uh, if I click extra, sorry, I went to the wrong one. If I click purchases, this will be a list now of anybody who has purchased. And I can also export that to a spreadsheet to use how I need. If you have questions on that, be sure to let us know. But that's kind of the extras, you know, tickets, you know, maybe t-shirts, things, that sort of thing. Uh, the importing we already covered. And then the statement, um, this pre-reg isn't collecting credit cards, but if you were, uh, you would have a statement here that would show how many wrestlers are in, what your processing fees are, how much money was collected, and that sort of thing. So that's how you can get to that. A lot of people will call or uh, send tickets in wondering about those sorts of things. Check here first, and if you have questions, feel free to let us know. And then now we're back to the data field. So we want to cover this. Uh, data fields, there's a few that are always collected. These are default and you can't change these. It's obviously first name, last name, date of birth, team, the tournament. If you have multiple tournaments, that comes into play and is very important. The division and the weight class. So that's how you would... Um, uh, those are the ones that are required and you can't change those, but these you can change So if you have state, maybe you don't want to collect the state I'm just using the control key and I can click on or off any of these So I decide which ones I want which ones I don't want and I click which click the save button The other item um, in here is the add field. So there's a couple here that I already have added. I'm going to touch on this waiver one because that's a question we get quite frequently. And then I'm going to show you how to add a field for actual weight, which comes up a lot in uh, Madison block bracketing tournaments. But this waiver one comes up quite a bit. Uh, you'll notice that I have this, the instructions here. So when somebody comes through after I have this set up, they're going to see this link, click here to read the waiver. So they can click this, they can see the waiver. Of course, this isn't actually a waiver. It's just that image. But you would have an image online that you would have added there. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a document online. And they would be able to read that. And then they would go through. So if I click this, this one's already added. But they would say something like the field name would be maybe I agree to the consent waiver. Or maybe you had some other verbiage there you'd want to use. I would not use a pick list. And then this is my um, HTML to link that image and for them to be able to click like I just did. Um, I want to require this field so they make sure that they have to um, enter their initials or something like that. So maybe I would put here something like please initial. Something along those lines. I click save and then that's what they would see. And again, then within there when they go through the pre-reg process, they would click this to see that. Now, if I want to add a field, I can do that right here. I just click the Add Field. And in my case, I'm going to do one that's called Actual Weight. If I'm doing block bracketing, maybe I'm not doing weigh-ins. I'm just going to you know, go use the Honor System. Um, I can select different um, data types here. I'm going to do Real Number. I am not going to use a pick list. And a pick list would be um, a drop-down menu that they could select from. But I'm not going to do that. My restricted range, maybe I'm going to go 30 pounds to 199 pounds. Um, this would just um, kind of help alleviate some of the misfiring and maybe them putting in 400 pounds rather than 40 or something like that. Data entry instructions, I could put something there. In my case, it's very self-explanatory. I might put interactual weight, but I'm not going to. Default value, I'm going to leave blank, and I am going to require it. I, of course, wouldn't have to require it, but I'm going to. And then I add that field. And that's basically it. So when they go through now, they're going to have these questions to answer as well. We touched a little bit on this actual weight, which relates directly to Madison block bracketing. Um, the other thing I want to make sure, and I missed this when we were going through, but in my divisions and weights, if I'm doing a Madison block bracketed tournament, if I click on my intermediate, I wouldn't have all of these weight classes. I would only have this NA weight class. So they would have to select that NA weight class. But that's basically um, how they would do that. One other item that uh, comes up quite a bit is the separation criteria. So maybe you want people to enter or select um, excellent, good, average, beginner, which is the track wrestling defaults. 
you may want that in there you may want it removed it's going to be in by default so if you order a tournament um, by default when I go through to register for your tournament there's going to be a spot in there where it's going to ask me to select my skill level uh, if you don't want that in there uh, just a couple quick steps in order to be able to remove that I'm actually going to go into a different tournament just because it's easy to see and I have it open but basically I'm going to come into my um, setup menu and I'm going to go to separation criteria and I land on this page um, I'm going to come here right now it's currently added if I didn't want it I would just exclude it and then now they wouldn't see that in the pre-registration if you don't see this link for separation criteria just go to your settings page and on this page there's a use separation criteria field right here if you flip that from no to yes you will then see this separation criteria field here and one other quick point here um, if you have some event qualifications you could do this let's say that you wanted to go and add a qualification I could go and actually grab a tournament and track wrestling would pull of a placement from a certain tournament so I'd go get the tournament I could add a placement maybe first through fourth and if I added that um, then our system would use that to give a wrestler um, a separation criteria the other thing that comes up occasionally is let's say you want to separate states you could put all of the states you would list them out you know Alabama Alaska right down the line if you gave them all a priority of one it would separate them all equally so if you have questions on that be sure to let us know and that is the basics of setting up your pre-registration and running um, we hope that you use the system and that it works great for you again if you do have questions please use our ticket system or give us a call and we will be happy to help you out